do you think auto extend is a good thing or a bad thing? My view is yes, but. Auto extend. And this was a very simple question that came in. Do you think auto extend is a good thing or a bad thing? And yeah, that's a, an interesting question because DBAs in particular, we love, we love, we love debate. And, and often we can become quite stubborn. And I'd be willing to bet that probably half the people on the call are like auto extend, I can't live without it. Other half people have gone like auto extend, you're not a real DBA if you have to rely on auto extend. So I thought I'd give you my thoughts and, and a couple of reasons why um, I have my thoughts. If I persuade you to change your mind, great. If not, obviously that's no drama at all. My view is yes, but, and I mean, yes, I'm in favor of auto extend and I have a little but here at the end. So in the good old days, auto extend was easy. You had a table space, it would slowly fill up. And then once it was full, auto extend would simply add some space to allow for more segments to grow. If you had a table space consisting of multiple data files, as they filled up, it would simply pick one and extend it. Job done. The logic of auto extend is remarkably simple. The nice thing, or yeah, maybe the nice thing in my view is the person who was doing the growing. So if I flip back to this slide, the person who tipped the table space over that full mark, they're the culprit. They're the person that was inserting into a table or doing something which made the table grow. They're the person that waits. The table space gets full. You've said auto extend of say 100 megs. That person waits for their insert to finish because we now have to go format 100, K, 100 megabytes worth of blocks on the disk. And then once that's done, that person's insert can complete. That's both a good thing in the sense that you made the problem, you have to wait. However, in an OTP environment, that's also a bad thing. If you're measuring transactions in microseconds, then what happens is when you look at your pattern over the day, you got 10 microseconds, 100 microseconds, 500 microseconds. Oh, look, 12 seconds. That's not a great OTP response time. And that 12 seconds was spent for someone waiting for my file to be format at another 100 megabytes of, of blocks, for example. So we wanted to tackle this such that people never had to wait for a table space to auto extend. We changed all this, believe it or not, this changed way back, I think in 9i.2, just very loosely documented and therefore sort of went, you know, flew under the radar. You'll see now in your database, a background process called SMC0, Space Management Coordinator. And it's a process that came in, I think it was 9.2 or 10G. And there's a hidden parameter that defaults to three. And generally we recommend just leave hidden parameters alone. And what three means is I'm going to, let, let's, let's use the modern parlance. I'm going to use some aid of artificial intelligence and some machine learning to actually solve the auto extend delay problem. What happens is, is as your table space crosses a warning threshold, even though the table space is not full, the database goes, you know, let's auto extend in advance. Also the database, and this is where the AI comes in, if it says, okay, over the last N minutes, I've noticed a strong growth trend that suggests to me that in a short amount of time, we will fill the table space. It will also proactively auto extend the file. In that way, when the person gets to the point where the table space would have normally been full and therefore they would have to wait for the auto extend to happen, it's already occurred. In that way, we sort of think of it as like the donkey chasing the carrot. You know, we are constantly moving the table space in size such that you never, ever hit the, um, the boundary. A couple of things to be aware of, though, is with this, when we proactively decide to auto extend, we extend all the files. So if your table space consists of lots of data files, they will all extend. So that could be a fairly hefty jump. How much do they grow by? There's a, another underscore parameter, which is KT text warning, which says, grow the table space by 5%. Now, 5% sounds like a reasonable thing. You know, if, if I cross say 80% full, before I get to 85, we'll make it an extra 5% larger, the table space. But that could be a lot of growth because nowadays you have things like big file table spaces. Big file table spaces are a single file that can be terabytes in size, like ridiculously large. If you have a 64 terabyte big file, then at 5%, is what? 3.2 terabytes of growth. That's going to be a lot of formatting blocks. Your database is going to go, oh, we've hit the 60 terabyte mark. 
you're heading towards 64, I'll just dip out now and format 3.2 terabytes of blocks in order for this next growth. Big files could be huge amounts of resource work in doing this auto extend in preparation for the growth. It also might be a lot of weights. Now, what do I mean by that? Let's say your 5% in this example is say 20 gigabytes of space. So it's not a big file table space, it's, it's big enough. 5% is 20 gigabytes, so 10% is 40. So that's a 400 gigabyte data file. That's not out of the realms of, of a big file size. If your table space was defined with an auto extend of 100 megabytes, just because it says 100 megabytes, the database space management coordinator is going to go, I need to grow this by 20 gig. So it's going to go grab 100 meg, grab 100 meg, grab 100 meg, grab 100 meg. During this time, there is some contention going on because each after each 100 meg, we have to format those blocks. And while we're formatting those blocks, we have to do some you know, management here to make sure that if your table space actually was going to grow into those blocks because the growth is so fast, that you can't use them yet. There's some locking going on, some conserialization going on to make sure that we can't grab extents out of these formatted blocks just yet. If you are doing this huge amount of auto extend, even though your table space isn't full yet, you might actually see some slowdowns in your transactions, which obviously is the thing we were trying to avoid in the first place. One of the things I mentioned here is you wanna be careful with what I call anomalous insertion. And anomalous insertion is, as I said, we are looking at the growth rate of data in that table space. You might have a table space that grows, say, 10 megabytes every day as transactions come in. But at the end of the week, we might do some sort of summary, build some summary table, and whoop, you know, we go from 30% to 60% full, all in one big chunk. The database is going to see that and go, oh, 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 you've gone from 30 to 60 like this. I'd better prepare for the fact that you're going to go from 60 to 90 like that as well and you get these big aggressive growth cycles going on. If you have anomalous insertion, you need to be a little bit careful. This is one of the few times where you can actually adjust these with the guidance of Oracle support. You log in SR and they'll give you the go ahead to do things like uh, enable spruce pre-allocation to zero. That simply turns it off. That reverts back to old auto extend behavior, i.e. we get full, we auto extend. And they might also give you some guidance of maybe leaving it on, but changing your KT text warning from say 5% down to 1%, etc. cetera. So you have some flexibility there. As always with underscore parameters, you speak to support first, but just be aware that the way of most of us think about auto extend actually changed a long time ago without a lot of us actually being told. Let's get back to my, where I said yes, but. Having said all of that, I still think auto extend is a good thing to have. And, and the, my two justifications for this. Number one is if you have auto extend turn off and you fill up, then you get an error. It's simple as that. You get you know, unable to extend table space, the standard error. DBAs will be telling me, you know, well, if you do that, that's the DBA's fault. That's poor management, et cetera, et cetera. I take your point on all those things, but it still means it can happen. And for me, I would rather have my users go a little bit more slowly than actually have them see an error. For me, slowness trumps errors. Now, that's for me. It might not be the case. You might prefer actually to have an error. For me, I would rather not have any errors and have them at least just go slowly. The second one is what I call full versus robustness. If I have auto extend, then always with the new um, algorithms we have, we're probably always going to have at least 5% of free space floating around in that table space. In my experience, table spaces that run close to the wire, like 96, 97, 98% full because they haven't got auto extend turned on. Yes, they haven't had any errors, but generally, Full systems, in my view, generally crash more often. You know, when you're running that close to the wire, you didn't, you just get that much, you know, more risky. I did an example, I think, in last month's office hours or the month before, where I showed that when you do alter table move, sometimes you need more than twice the space because of the way the database works. So you might have a 100 meg table to move, you've got 100 meg of free space, you think, yeah, that's gonna be fine, but you might get an error. The moment you're starting to run very, very close to the wire in terms of fullness, I think that's generally always gonna be a risk profile you'd rather stay away from. So for me, I generally like to avoid the errors and I like to avoid full systems. And that's why I prefer auto extend as a general rule. G'day, Connor here. Just wanted to say thank you for watching the video. I appreciate the fact that you chose to watch a tech video instead of being out in the beautiful weather and the beautiful sunshine. I'm very flattered by that choice. Make sure you subscribe by clicking up here or watch another video straight away just down here. Either way, hopefully I'll see you on the next tech video. Bye for now.